we already know three variable types. We have learned the int type. Let me call the name x, and they can hold integer type integer type variables here. Fifty negative forty nine zero. We have learned the float, and it can hold it can hold decimal types. It can hold just decimals here. Now, finally, we have learned the char here. It can hold only one character, but that character has to be in single quotes here. So that's what we know so far here, and we will be using these from here on out here. If you'd like to learn how to store more than one character, you'll have to wait till later, but if you demand immediate satisfaction and have to know how to store names or anything else like that, warp to this lesson here. Now, this lesson is a, uh, we skipped quite a few lessons here, but you don't need to know the things in between here necessarily here. But, but you can just warp here for a little bit, then you can come back to this lesson here if you have to know what it is right now. Because I know that people are curious about how to store more than one character, which is called a string. It's, it's a variable type string, but to learn how to learn a little bit more about it, it's in a high, it's in an upper level lesson here. But you can warp to that, then you can come back to it afterward. So it's still nicer to go through all the lessons in order here. All right, but that's not why we're here. We're going to learn a fourth variable type. It's going to be called the boolean variable. Now the keyword for that is bool, b-o-o-l, which is short for boolean here. Now it sounds really scary but it's not. It's the easiest variable type that we will learn. Okay, so I want to call my, I don't want to call my boolean, I want to call mine smart. Now boolean variables can only hold two values here. So the boolean value can either hold true or it can hold false. That's it. It's that simple. Boolean values can only hold true or false. And notice that true and false are keywords here. That's it. But let me just go over a little bit more here. I just want to clarify a few syntax things that C is going to use. So just keep that in mind. True or false here. So let's say we output the variable smart. Let's see what happens. Notice it prints off a 1 to the screen here. So when a Boolean variable is true, the uh, computer is going to know it as 1. If it's false, on the other hand, the compiler will read this and it will be read as false. So that's it. So 0 is false, 1 is true. So if a value is true, it's going to be denoted as a 1. If a value is false, it'll be zero. So that's it. Zero, false, one, true. Now what if we set this equal to seven here? What's going to happen? It prints off a one, meaning that it is true. So now let me get to this in a second here. Let's say I did negative 13 here. Let me explain to you what, what I'm trying to show you here. It's still true. If it's false, if it's zero, it'll be a zero. So let me tell you something. The point of all that was, if we set this equal to a number here, and say it's any number here, if that number is not zero, it's going to be true. And that if this number is zero, it is false. It is that simple. If it's not zero, it's true, because it's going to print off a one to the screen. If we set it equal to a different number, if, if it is zero, it's going to be considered false here. So what this does here, when, uh, when we set a variable equal to like seven or something here, it will convert that integer value into a true or a false. So regardless of what it was, it won't, it won't store that seven anywhere. It will just turn it into a true or a false. And when it does that conversion here, it converts it into 
a true or false. It's, that's it. Because that's the only thing it can hold. Now I want to go over more in a different tutorial on these conversions here when we try to try to stuff very different types of variables in different types we we'll, we will see what happens in a later tutorial so that wraps up this lesson here boolean values can only hold true or false and um what is the point of a boolean variable well you're going to have to wait until we get to the if statement here then we will see why we use boolean variables and boolean statements we'll we'll be using boolean statements throughout the rest of our programming career so that wraps this tutorial up and let's move on